Roman Empire slept off its greed during the Pax Romana. Further east, Byzantium gloried in its wealth while waves of invaders swept across Europe. Charge! 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 The Franks, the Goths, Jutes, Angles, Bretons, Germanic tribes, the Swedes. Not all at once! Take your turn. And then there were the Vandals, the Visigoths. Hey, watch where you're going! Instead of bothering to wake up and fight, Rome opted for peace. But there were shady goings on beyond the Danube. Here we see the Huns hideout and their fearsome leader, Attila. And with the respects of my master, here you are. Mm -hmm. Nope, something's missing. Huh? What do you say we'd take a stroll by way of Byzantium, huh? But why don't we head further to the west? They're supposed to be richer over there and defenseless. The most savage, the most terror-inspiring, the cruelest of conquerors. None other than the Huns. Kids will be kids. And there were the inevitable tax collectors. Any more of those and we'll have nothing left. Look over there! Attack! Attack! Come inside, honey. That goes over there. The people are eager to rebuild. Yay, hooray, yay, yay. <laughs> Here, now you try. <laughs> no sooner is the work finished than visitors arrive. Tax collectors. It's them. They're back again. Approaching fast. They'll be here before long. Oh, impossible. Well, what are we waiting for? Ah, yes, Maestro's quite right. What else could they do but go back to work for everyone's benefit? The people no longer felt like defending Rome, grown weak and helpless from exploitation and loose living. The Christians rallied with shouts of fraternity and equality, and invasions started up again. Genseric and his vandals looted Rome. The Visigoths, led by Euric, conquered Spain and Aquitaine. Clovis, with his 6,000 warriors, was king of the Franks. In the West, the Roman Empire has breathed its last. But if the empire itself was gone, its spirit was soon to be reincarnated in the new ruling class. The church at Reims was too small to hold the 3,000 Frankish warriors who came there to be baptized. 496, meet Clovis, the only Catholic king in the West, and therefore assured of the clergy's powerful support. Together, they dictated the law for the good of the people. For murdering a Frankish warrior, fine 
200 uh, sous. Oh. Uh, Murdering a Gallo Roman soldier. Uh, 100 sous. Uh, Murder of a pregnant woman. 400 sous. Ain't worth it. Boo. Who? Well, uh, God. Kidnapping a married woman. 100 sous. For relieving a soldier of his foot. 100 sous. Or of his hand. 100 sous. Or even his nose. 100 sous. For putting out a soldier's eye. 100 sous. For an unsuccessful hand chopping. 63 sous. A cut thumb. 50 sous. A finger. 35 sous. Bashing in heads or bellies, 30 sous. Ah. Bloodletting, 15 sous. A fist fight, 9 sous. And flirting with a married woman. Hey, sweetie, you like to see my etchings? <laughs> as for Clovis, he continued to do just as he pleased. This boss will be part of my share of the booty. Long live the king! Long live the king! Long live the king! No sense. This is all you'll get. Oh! Oh! And before long... You down there, what's that you're wearing? That hatchet, could you tell me why it's smeared with muck? Remember the Soissons vase became a pet saying of Clovis, who also had his uh, uh, diplomatic solutions for family squabbles. With his royal cousins, both male and female. His descendants were just as adept at making non-refusable offers. In those days, life wasn't easy, even in royal circles. Oh, my love, here's my heart, which beats just for you. Really? Well, no. Oh. Life wasn't easy. But why drag on the boring adventures of a noble king and his worthy successors? When we can let them drop and move eastward, where a new, totally unforeseen conquering force had risen, Islam. At Poitiers, the Arabs came face to face with Charles Martel. Charles Martel had just saved Europe from Islam. Careful, they're coming. I can't figure out what he wants, but I'm supposed to go with him as far as the forest. Hello, good sirs. How goes it, today? good man? It goes rather badly, stranger. We're fleeing from our master who beats us for his own pleasure, bully that he is, and oh! Can't help you much. Our master's just as bad, if not worse. He's a tyrant. Can one of you morons tell me where my deer are? <laughs> ah, there you are. You there, Tubbs. Grab that tree and make me some planks. It's too small, sir. It's impossible. You make it when that's an order. Don't you agree? With such a small tree, it's impossible to make good-sized planks. Yes, you can, you can, you can, you can. In my opinion, impossible. Eh? Who asked you, eh? No, no, impossible. Hey, how dare you butt in? Guards, grab this meat in its own zone. Go on! <laughs> well, if you prefer, you can always take that one. It's even better. Huh? Same problem. Hey, you down there, idiots. I'm talking. What is it with this land, worthless clod? You'd better wrestle up some wheat down there unless a beating from me appeals to you. Ah, now that's much nicer. Yoo-hoo. Hey-ho. Huh. Didn't we just see him in the forest? Huh? Tell me, does this rich land down here belong to you, huh? Yes, it's all mine. You have been chosen to serve as a soldier. Soon you will be drafted. You can go as far as you want. It's quite an honor for you. I know of more than one who'd sell all his possessions just to take your place. 
Yes, I'm quite aware of what you're saying. May I offer you one-fourth of my land? Someone could replace me. Come now, a little more, servant. I want it all. How about one-third? No. You'd be better off accepting. Salut, salut. salut. Good day. Good day. Good day, Good friends. friends. We salute you all. Hail to you, travelers. Courage on your way. Welcome to you, comrades. Sure, he has said it was too small, but maybe by stretching it a little. Good day, Fred. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Just fine, as you see. Well, what have we here? Maybe some recaptured runaway serfs. Autumn is here, the grape and wheat harvests are in, and all those possessing goods must pay their due to their lord and master. It's not an easy task, but then, what choice is there? Very well. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right. <laughs> ah, yeah. Mm, how lovely. <laughs> hey, I knew all along they'd be too small. Well, I tried my best to stretch them, sir. Uh, away with this wise guy know it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, then. Uh, yeah. Ah, there we are, son. I do hope you thought over my proposition, huh? <laughs> of course he thought it over. And now he's wondering what miracle could possibly save him. Missy Dominici, the king's special envoys. Quite an honor. Hey there, Bishop. You, here we are. What's that scribbling you're doing, huh? Well, uh, I demand to know what business it is of yours. Why don't you go on home? I'm getting off. Hey, first, my boy. Me, old bones. I'm for shove over. Mm. Hey, rats, I'll kill him. Page before look, sonny. Can't you see this thing? Know what that means? And the precedence of the church? Mm. Ah. According to custom, each noble guest was entitled to 40 loaves of bread, three measures of beer, one pig, three chickens, 15 eggs, three bushels of wheat, and so on and so on. Uh. Mm. My friends, I present you our King Charlemagne. Uh. Uh. Dear Count, before your eminence arrenders the king's justice, I'd like to offer you a brocade worked with precious metals as proof of the respect you always inspire and as proof of my undying fidelity, my lord, uh, as well as a few trinkets, further proof of my endless devotion to you. Uh, fine, I accept, but just mark my words just to make you happy. And then harness and stirrups. Stirrups? By Jiminy, that's a dandy idea. Forward! Now, that guy's the worst bum I can imagine. Not one measly ear or corn or braid of grass. But, but my land is poor, sir. Four sacks more. <laughs> and I say it's mine. <laughs> How can it be mine and yours? Haven't we seen this somewhere before? Why don't you cut it in two? Split it in half. Well, all right. I'm opposed to killing this poor beast. Very well. Keep it then. The animal is yours. But these two will never understand why. Would you look at what happened to that nice big tree? These puny planks, ridiculous. Uh, permit me, sire, but the tree of which you speak was tiny, hardly bigger than that there. You're just a sloppy worker. For damages caused, you're fined two pieces of gold. Pay your master. Not much chance of that. I'm stone, stone broke. But I suggest he go looking for a bigger tree. No half-wit tree hackers in my forest. Might as well take that. It's better than nothing, mister. <laughs> Here, son, just give me those poor little planks. I'm going to try and work this thing out. What? There, by Jove, you happy now? Next, please. 
Gonna have trouble with her. She's a sorceress. <laughs> Only good witch is a burnt witch. That's out of the question. Absolutely, forget that. Come on, uh, why, why not? not? Well then, why don't you put a match to your miserable scraps of lumber? My plants, forget it. Yes. No. You will. I won't. You will. Won't, won't. Will, will. Won't. Will. Oh. <laughs> you now, on with the show. I won't give up my land and livestock just to keep clear of the army. If I did, how do you live? It'd be paupers. So sorry, but that's the law. Me, I simply carry it out. The law is for everybody. Here, let's have one a One little word, boys. The law says just one third. Eh? Am I hearing things? Me, I'll make sure his zero gives all he's got. Me, I'll make sure this youngster gives no more than a third. Eh, 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 eh. I better review this law. There you are, sir, the royal edict. Don't bother. Anyway, I never knew how to read. This will not please Charlemagne, and watch out when he's angry. You'll accept one third only. Even that's a ripoff. Mm. All due respect for your royal taste, eh? may I just point out how much better your courtiers might look if you'd stop dressing them up mm. like a chorus line? <laughs> mm -hmm. Count, you've gotten wine all over your superb outfit. I'm bored, gentlemen. We'll be leaving for the hunt immediately. Uh, permit me, sire, to change into a suitable outfit. So I'll be just a minute. How can we go hunting dressed up like go-go dancers? I said immediately. I've got it. At last, I'm sure of it. Yes, yes, there. Yeah. Ah, yes, finally. It's true perfection. A real handsome fellow, and when he came over, she said, Sire, come up and see me sometime. My dear sirs, those of you courtiers wishing to pose as peacocks must find another court to pose in. Go and change and come back looking like ranks. See for yourself, sire. The stirrup, my latest invention. This time I can guarantee a perfect product. At last, equipped with stirrups, your cavalry will be invincible. Up until now, during an attack, a horseman could be too easily thrown for a loop. But from now on, thanks to the stirrup, Nothing and no one will be able to stop the Frankish cavalry! Hey! Sire! Sire! We've won! Sire, it's a great victory! The fortifications at Avar have been toppled! A great victory for the Frankish cavalry! No, no, I beg of you, don't thank me, please! The booty's enormous! Wagon loads of gold, silver, other treasures, arms, silks and satins! We've routed the enemy once and for all! Oh, oh, oh! Let's drink to our victory. Have a sip of this wine. Mm. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Come here. And now, Trevere, read us something nice. Friend, roll on soldier home, for Charlemagne will rescue you and your army. Mm. What then? Here, you go mm. on. I give up for now. Here, read. You and your army. Uh... Continue. Uh, well, you see, it's like this. Uh, I got to admit, sire, I don't know how to read. Well, listen, or two won't do him any harm, eh? As of this very moment, it will be compulsory for all clerks and for all children to go to school and learn to read. Good night, father. Mm -hmm. Sleep well. You too, my child. Good night. Where 
过上来。A A A A A B B B B B C C C C. Yep. Now the numbers. That's two. That one's four. This one's six. Well, that's not even. See, that's a two. To figure this all out. A strong young man by now, young Peter heads for the capital where Maestro awaits him, and school begins. Go on after school. Come on now. Ah, that's enough. You hear, you little brat. Merciful heavens! They'll make a priest out of him. I don't know why it's so important. Books and figures. He'd be much more useful here with us. How true it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That makes three sacks. Hmm. I'm not sure a Wiccan's worth it. Next, please. Let's go. Ah! What's that? That's Abu Labaz, the white elephant presented by the powerful Caliph of Baghdad, Harun al Rashid, to his friend, the Emperor Charlemagne. I'm sure you'll be happy here. You'll of course have to work. Lazy bones are not welcome here with us. That's all Greek to me. <laughs> you wait for me here, my son. The emperor has need of me. Go on in. Charlemagne took care of everything. From then on, writing characters would be those we know today. Numerals would be Arabic. One foot would equal 33 centimeters, the length of his foot. One pound would equal 20 sous, one sou, 12 deniers. In France, this was the rule till 1789, and the same system exists in England today. And if by some chance the earth doesn't turn, uh, if it were, well, of course, no, really, there's no reason. Uh, Take a look. And remember the psalmist, Eustorum anime in manu dei sunt. Let me recommend my young protege. Hmm. 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 Huh? Very well, my son. Good work. Majesty. Hmm. On my left, I want all those students whose work was poor. And over here on my right, I want your most brilliant students. You, you play around whenever you can instead of paying serious attention to school. Of you, I am proud. I will give you aid. Charlemagne died in the year 814 at the age of 72. Louis the Pious, his only living son, organized a beauty contest among local princesses in order to pick a wife. The choice was difficult since all were lovely. But then, here she was, his Cinderella, Miss Europe of 819, Judith of Wealth. With no more iron hand to rule it, the empire began falling apart. The nobility and clergy set themselves up as feudal lords. Thirty years after Charlemagne's death, nothing was left of his empire. Christian education would remain in a state of disrepair for over two centuries. Not long thereafter, the Treaty of Verdun divided what had been the first united Europe into three parts. The result was 11 centuries of war. That same year, on Midsummer's Day, the Vikings sailed into Nantes. <laughs> 